Thank you for visiting the Coin Lady channel again. Look, we needed to know what was going on around us, so that we could reduction, in XRP value a huge shout out to Ripple, XRP drops, during her presentation, Nelly Liang, Secretary of the US Department of the Treasury and OM F at the Cosmos Club, discussed the policy framework, corporate motives, an initiative promoting the creation of innovative digital payment systems, Policy clarity on AML slash BSA in the new payment environment is urgently needed, especially with the momentum in CBDC and scalability, privacy and security are essential features of any solution. Developing Microsoft's AI skills ZKP0 knowledge proofs and the CCF confidential consortium framework are two key components of this new market that will provide scalable security and privacy solutions. Adding to that, Lauren Blythe, a Ripple Effect, recently spoke with RMF about the regulatory and technical needs for improving the central bank's money's legacy capabilities. What we have here are CBDCs, tokenization, and stable coins. We take a look at what this could mean for companies, investors, and customers. We also discuss the future plans for the US financial ecosystem to incorporate stable currencies and the tokenization of CBDCs, including how this could contribute to economic development and resilience. Keep in mind that I'm holding these important talks with organizations like the IMF while serving as head of public policy and government at Ripple. For what reason am I going into such detail about this again? Well, it's all down to the International Monetary Fund IMF, whose involvement we'll get to in a little. The International Monetary Fund has written an excellent piece about if and ripples over here. James Wallace, DMI, Yearly 2024, and Tropical Issues, Advantages, and Obstacles. Actually, this is from the DMI Annual Meeting in 2024. Here we have solutions, benefits, and roadblocks that are compatible, called interoperability. Now he did summarize the quotation from this. It delves further into talks about interoperability and the implications it may have for opening up access to financial systems and payments that span borders. This needs to be discussed extensively. What intrigues me about this is how significant the DMI annual meeting is, whether it's the actual meeting itself or the conversation that surrounds it. Why? We know it was a big deal in 2023 because, as we will see in a moment, there are a number of significant individuals engaged. Additionally, to grasp the significance of this in relation to Ripple's overarching objective for the Internet of Value, one must be familiar with the identity of the International Monetary Fund IMF. We will also go over the important debates that have already taken place with the IMF Ripple and the IMF while we are talking about this. Here then is our identity. Thus, the International Monetary Fund IMF, is a non-governmental organization that serves as a neutral forum for international cooperation in the areas of public and private sector involvement, economic policy, and central banking. Here we will examine the Digital Pound Foundation and the Digital Euro Association because, as I've already mentioned, these think tank organizations, or even just groups, are extremely important components that you must concentrate on. In the grand scheme of things, these think tanks have been making tremendous progress toward a digital pound and even a digital euro. The core of this network consists of public investors from throughout the world, who together have investable assets of $43 trillion. Right now, we have the advisors list over here. Even if these people are enormous, I'm going to ignore them for the time being since what really interests me is the behavior of the capital markets. Consider all these major participants. Indeed, there are powerful financial institutions, organizations, and enterprises that support the capital markets. Even in the realm of monetary policy, these are the major players that support this think tank. Not only do you see universities listed here, but you also see the Bank of China, the Primary Bank of Thailand, and Deutsche Bank, all of which are quite well-known institutions. The list goes on and on with well-known figures, 
companies, and investors, with ties to the colleges that make up the commission and other important allies. And lastly, there's political economy, and this is where you find some pretty famous people associated with it as well. This think tank's extensive network is once again demonstrated. Also, considering that this was with the US Department of the Treasury, having substantial discussions with them is also quite noteworthy. This is a group that has a significant influence over both the present and the future, and they are still actively involved in shaping events. Now, moving on to 2023. As a matter of fact, the HKMA meeting touched on tokenization in relation to the Green Bond trial. Now, as we've discussed, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority has strong ties to Ripple. However, the second relationship involves Goldman Sachs and tokenization, and it involves green bonds. Once more, the month is August of 2023. During a conversation with James Wallace in May, give or take, we learned all about the CBC platform's integration with the first pilot program run by the Hong Kong Monetary Authority. The fact that tokenization will permeate every asset class, including real estate, which has more than $300 trillion linked to it, was a major worry, and this was based entirely on that. It is a real estate use case centered around tokenization. This is a major application right here. Green bond studies using tokenization are the center of attention here at the HKMA project. Additionally, I am curious in the individuals involved in these experiments on the tokenization of green bonds. Could asset tokenization replace traditional settlement methods? It's June 15, the examination of CBDCs in relation to stable points and tokenized commercial bank money is now underway, and it is an intriguing development. CBDCs are clearly the preferred method of conducting financial market transactions among our audience members, which is an intriguing finding. However, this does provide us with an important insight regarding asset tokenization, one of the most promising approaches to laying the groundwork for a new ecosystem is the development of blockchain-based representations of financial assets. This new environment, what really is it? You know, it's the new financial system, but they aren't exactly letting us know that it is. However, a dramatic increase in the use of stable coins is necessary before we witness any shifts in the monetary policies of central banks. Additionally, there is the tokenization of funds held by commercial banks. In your opinion, what are the essential components that will allow it to be more than simply a new ecosystem? This is a brand new monetary system, no. Keep in mind that Ripple has already stated that they are concerned with the plumbing element of things, in fact, they are the plumbing themselves, since they are the rails that will carry everything else. Things like payment rails and their evolution are just a few of the many topics covered in great detail down here. We have spoken about distributed ledger technologies, DLTs, on several times. We know that they provide 24-7 availability, enhance liquidity, transparency, and the like. Also, the current state of CBDCs, additionally, the nature of money is evolving at a dizzying rate. Part 1 of the growing tokenized economy came out on February 7th of this year, and Part 2 and Part 3 of the tokenization revolution around the tokenized economy were just released by Ripple. This is another interesting aspect of the situation. Also covered extensively is the current state of affairs, with a focus on the convergence of the Internet of Value. In the center of that is tokenization. This way. Again, this was all happening in February or March before tokenization made it possible, but we also have business tactics for managing tokenization part two. No, this is the most important part to think about. Indeed, the XRP ledger is the central focus of Ripple's tokenization efforts, in fact, the company has recently advertised jobs related to institutional DeFi activities, all of which revolve on the XRP ledger. Now we can access the tokenized economy's liquidity. Wondering whether they are actually doing that. Well, that concludes our video. 
Your support in the form of a like and a subscription would mean the world to me. Coming up shortly, farewell.